All right, welcome to our scene on chronic granulomatous disease, represented by corn neck granny over here. This is corn neck granny, right? Her neck is a corn. It is corn neck granny, corn neck granny for chronic granulomatous disease, okay? So she's having a really rough day, and through this scene, we're gonna remember the features of chronic granulomatous disease. You might have noticed that she's stepping on this little X block over here. That's added to her frustrating day that she hurt her foot on this small X block. Small X block shows up in our X-linked recessive videos. Chronic granulomatous disease, the most common form, is inherited in X-linked recessive fashion. Okay, let's begin over here. So here, her pet ox died. Her pet ox died over on the floor. And this is not any random pet ox. This is a no PhD ox. On the ox it says no PhD. I don't know why there's no PhD tattooed to the ox, but no PhD ox, no PhD ox for NADPH oxidase. And because it's dead, that's gonna help us remember the, the defective NADPH oxidase. In chronic granulomatous disease, there's a def defect in NADPH oxidase. What's NADPH oxidase? So NADPH oxidase is used by macrophages to generate reactive oxygen species. Reactive oxygen species is actually a really good thing inside of macrophages because it helps them kill pathogens. Once there's a defect in NADPH oxidase, such as in chronic climatous disease, this will lead to an inability of macrophages to properly destroy certain pathogens. So here we have the macrophage. This red macrophage shows up in a lot of our videos representing the macrophage. And these ROSs over here are being exploded. This to help us remember that there's a decrease in reactive oxygen species. So too over here, we have this neutrophil. Neutrophil relies on the respiratory burst. And here we have this respiratory burst over here. This little bomb we'll call the respiratory burst. And we'll have this respiratory burst exploding. To help us remember that there's a similar decrease in respiratory burst in neutrophils. What does this lead to? Well, of course, it's going to lead to an increase in, in infection. If the macrophages cannot do their job to properly get, get rid of pathogens, there's going to be an increased susceptibility to certain diseases. So here we have this huge cat, and this cat shows up in our catalase positive microbiology videos. This cat is going to help us remember that there's an increased susceptibility specifically to catalase positive organisms, such as Staph aureus, Nocardia, Serratia, and Aspergillus. Patients have recurrent purulent skin and lung infections, and most commonly pneumonia, but many different types of diseases. Okay, how is diagnosis made? So here we have the mouse. We'll call the rodent. The rodent with the two hydrants. The dihydrant rodent. The dihydrant rodent for dihydrorhodamine. The abnormal dihydrorhodamine test, which is a flow cytometry test, and the finding would be a decreased green fluorescence, would be an indication of chronic granulomatous disease. Additionally, which we don't have in the scene, is the nitroblun tetrazolamine dye. This tests for the ability of NADPH oxidase to convert oxygen to superoxide. If this test fails, in which the dye doesn't turn blue, that would be an indication, that would be an indication for chronic granulomatous disease. Alright, thank you so much for watching this scene on chronic granulomatous disease. I hope you enjoyed. Take care.